together, church. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Gloria and Olga are not with me today, as you notice, because Gloria is in her last day of gymnastics camp. And next week, she's going to be headed off to start second grade. Welcome visitors and church family to Florida Faith Church Online, a fresh expression of church with a new energy and a community creating a revival for the sake of the gospel. Great news, yay! We will be starting in person back to our waterfront worship again on August 26th at 6.30 p.m. So please download our app for details. We have also started to get back together in uh, small groups, uh, social distance groups, Bible study groups, and so forth. Our Ladies in Scripture meets on Fridays, and other events and life groups will be announcing things gradually over the next several weeks and months. If you're on Facebook right now or on YouTube, please make sure to share and like this and maybe even start a viewing party. One more thing, I want to congratulate my niece, JC Lynn, and her new husband, Brendan. They are now Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. And the flowers behind me are to congratulate them on their new life as husband and wife. And I got to say, welcome to the family, Brendan. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Gracious Father, we love you. And we thank you so much for JC and Brendan and their their matrimony. We also want to thank you so much for this worship service. And we ask for so many people that are going through such a tough time in life right now. Lots of people are missing loved ones or missing friends, fun activities, and missing church. So we pray that you can help us to find some new ways to have fun and for the Holy Spirit to do a good thing in our souls and in our community. And we lift all these things up in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's children say together, Amen. Now, turn to the person you're worshiping with or send a text message, an email, your dog or cat, whatever it is, and say, God loves you and so do I. You may be wondering how you can best serve people in your community and in the world right now. 
there are actually more ministry needs in our community and in our world right now than there has ever been before. You can help lead the way in meeting those needs by contributing now. This church is not part of a larger denomination that financially supports us. All of our ministries and missions helping those in need are supported completely by you. We need your help to ensure that we can continue to bring Jesus' message of faith, hope, and love to our world. I want to express a big thank you to those who have signed up for recurring giving, which helps us to determine and plan the ministry and missions we participate in during the entire year. As a thank you for when you contribute any amount to this ministry, we want to send you a beautiful, hand-carved wooden cross made from olive trees that flourish around Bethlehem. There are three ways that you can give to Florida Faith Church. You can text the words faith give right now to the number 77977 on your phone. You can click the word give in the, our, our app or on our website, or you can send a check to Florida Faith Church, 1 Hall of Fame Drive, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33316. Thanks so much for your continued support, love, and prayers. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken and great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out If you remember the motions to this part of the song, feel free to join in as we worship together.
Christian worship is about our triune God, the giver of life. It's about his mission in the world that everyone would shout his praise. And it's about our invitation into that mission. And so when we separate worship and discipleship from holy action, really we cheapen all three. We can't have worship without holy action and we can't have holy action without worship. In church, we are invited every single week to see how the good news of Jesus Christ is unfolded in our lives. And then we're sent to be the literal hands, heart, and voices of God's mission into a world that desperately needs it. And while this reality is always before us, this is a time in our nation. Have you ever been scared? I mean, you know, fearful, not able to take another step, just something that stops you in your path. I've been having lots of conversation and fear is at the center of many of these conversations over the past weeks and months. Whether it's fear from work, for home, for school with new online formats and the new formats that we're having or whatever the new horizons are in your life, people seem to be fearful right now. And fear is something that the Bible has a lot to say about. In fact, the command, fear not, appears in one form or another 365 times in the Bible to dozens of different individuals and groups in lots of different circumstances. So yes, that means that basically we have a fear not order given to us from the creator of the universe for every day of the year. So why do we so often respond in fear to stuff that's going on in our life? What can we do about it? And is there a better way? Pray with me. Gracious Father, thank you for this worship service. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are pleasing to you, O Father, our rock and our redeemer. We pray that all of your messages here, whether spoken or unspoken, are experienced by everyone. May the Holy Spirit move in our hearts and speak to us now, Lord. We lift this up in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's children together we say, Amen. So I have to tell you that I have a fear of heights. <laughs> in a building, you know those buildings that you walk into and there's a, a balcony right in front of you, you can kind of step out on the balcony, and typically there's one of those metal rails right there. I have no problem walking up to the metal rail. But lately in these new buildings, when you walk out on balconies, they've been putting these glass rails. And so when I walk out there, it's like oh, there's nothing in front of you. And if you're 10 or 20 stories up or something, it takes me a while to get over to kind of look down. I am fearful of that. I also have to tell you that I had a fear of moving from Spain back to Colorado with my wife about 20 years ago. I mean, we knew that God was calling us to continue our lives together in Colorado, and the future was a huge set of unknown circumstances for me, and definitely my wife, who is from a town four and a half hours outside of Madrid, Spain, the capital of Spain. And moving to the States was fearful for her. What things are you fearful of today, right now? What's your deepest fear? Or what was your deepest fear in the past, if you are fearless right now? Where or when in your life were you most fearful? Is it maybe right now? Or maybe you're fearful of a person, a set of circumstances, a new job, a school, your new schedule or something major in your life. Well, I have some great news. 
we have 365 instances in the Bible that we can look at to help us confront fear. So the Apostle Paul's encouragement to Timothy when Timothy was fearful was this. He said in the Bible, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Okay, so when I heard that, I came up with a few questions. If fear doesn't come from God, where does it come from? And I thought that, be, that the beginning of wisdom, as it says in the Bible, starts with the fear of the Lord. So what does that mean? And what is the difference? Well, one important difference to recognize is that there's both a healthy and an unhealthy fear. And understanding the difference, well, it could save your life. <laughs> and it will definitely help you interpret God's message to fear not. So let's take a look first at healthy fear. Healthy fear can literally save your life, right? I mean, say that you're hiking in the woods and you stumble upon a, a three baby bear cubs and a mama bear. Your healthy fear kicks in and you run out of there very quickly, right? I mean, healthy fear can heighten and sharpen your senses, which in many situations is a great benefit, like when you run in from a bear or when someone swerves into your lane on the highway without signaling and you do one of these with the car to get out of their way. Okay, so there's lots of evidence that that kind of response, running from a bear or avoiding an accident, is simply a natural response to situations that you'll find yourself in in life. You might call it fear or maybe just common sense. Whatever there, there is a healthy fear in your life that exists and it is beneficial to recognize a healthy fear. Okay, so pause, like stop here for a second because we have to note that there is also a healthy fear of the Lord. This healthy fear of the Lord is not only beneficial, it is biblical. So in Proverbs 1.7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now the original Hebrew word here for fear also means reverence. And it is good and right to hold God, right, the creator of a universe, in the place of awe and reverence and esteem as the creator and sustainer of our entire cosmos. I mean, he is the rightful owner of this uniquely divine place. And then in Psalms 5, 7, King David says, in reverence, I will bow down. And in Proverbs 9, 10, Solomon adds that the fear of the Lord, reverence of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. Now, King David had a healthy fear of the Lord throughout his life. And Solomon knew the fear of the Lord was the beginning of both knowledge and wisdom. Divine reverence be begins and brings godly understanding. That is an amazing gift. Okay, so we have godly fear or reverence, which means recognizing the proper place of the Lord as the divine creator and sustainer of the entire cosmos. So now let's, let's look at unhealthy fear. Unhealthy fear is that fear that brings you down, that gives you that empty feeling in, in the pit of your stomach, that unhealthy fear can bring your life to a standstill and just paralyze your world. It wakes you up in the middle of the night where you're going, ugh, what am I going to do? And make no mistake, unhealthy fear, this type of fear is not God's will for you. God wants you to grow in a relationship with him and with your church, your relationships with other believers, and ultimately in your faith. God wants us to persevere, to have a complete 
satisfying life, not lacking in anything. He's our father. He's happy when we are happy. He knows we are happy and he wants to enjoy that with us. He shares in our joys and knows that our free will will make life challenging because we make all sorts of crazy decisions, especially when you are a good Christian and you have that free will. Sometimes it gets pretty scary. People are persecuted for being a Christian, for sticking to their guns. I mean, there are people right now in other countries that are being tortured and killed if they say that they are Christians and they start to practice Christian worship. Yet we hear the Bible say, consider it all pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Yes, it can be scary and fear can stop you from moving forward into the good God has for your life. But good news, the Bible says in 2 Timothy, instead of a spirit of fear, so here's what we get instead of fear. You have been given a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So how can you respond to that? That's great news that we have these, this trifecta to address fear. So what can you do about it? Let's look at what we have been given instead of fear. First is power. Now, what I am about to tell you is some of the most powerful and important news that a believer can receive. When you as a believer have the Holy Spirit working in and through you, there is nothing that cannot be accomplished in accordance with the will of God. The Bible says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. If you are experiencing unhealthy fear that is hindering you, preventing you from experiencing the life in Christ that you are destined to live, then you need to put yourself in check. And remember that you were given the spirit of power, miracle working, death defying, grave robbing power in Christ to do all things in accordance with the will of God for the reason he created you. And this is the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. And that power lives inside of you. It's called the Holy Spirit. So instead of fear, we have been given power. And the second thing we've been given is love. In 1 John 4.18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. When we walk in the spirit of love, as Christ did, Unhealthy fear is driven far away from us. Jesus walked to the cross in a spirit of love. And we can assume that he walked out of the grave in the same empowered spirit. So don't forget, this is the same spirit alive in you. So the next time you're experiencing fear of, or any of its associates, stuff like, you know, anxiety, worry, doubt, all of those things that go along with fear, then check yourself and make sure that you are walking in a spirit of love. Okay, so we leverage our spirit of power against fear and love over fear. And finally, this is a big one, self-discipline. Now I struggle with self-discipline big time. I mean, how many of you have the same issue? You know you should be doing something in more discipline, but sometimes I just can't get the job done. Well, great news. 
<clears throat> Second Timothy, remember it said, for God gave us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. It takes a lot of discipline to recognize fear and to deal with it. You could just let it go and shrug it off and, and call it unhealthy fear and go, well, that's a fact of my life. But God loves us more than that. He loves you more than that. He gave us the power of discipline. And we need discipline to take the time to diagnose the fear that we are experiencing and even more discipline to deal with it. So think about it. This is God's character, <laughs> that God gives us exactly what we need to deal with unhealthy fear. He knew we were going to deal with that. He knew that, the, in, that these three ingredients, that trifecta I talked about, power, love, and discipline, would be necessary on this side of heaven to deal with fear. It speaks to just how destructive, unhealthy fear can be that God gave us all of these things. God gave us these things in our lives and we need the power and love and self-discipline to help us overcome fear. We need the discipline to check ourselves throughout the day. We need discipline to form new habits to overcome fear. And we need discipline in identifying healthy fear from unhealthy fear. And we need abundant power and love in our responses. I mean, thankfully, through Christ, we have been given a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. And when you begin to feel fear, Take time to identify whether it's a healthy or unhealthy fear. I mean, obviously, if you encounter a mama bear and her cubs in the woods, don't take too much time to figure that out. Just run. On the flip side, when you recognize unhealthy fear, pray to the Lord and ask him to keep you walking in a spirit of power and love all while trusting that through the Holy Spirit, you can experience a breakthrough in the area of self-discipline. So I wanna encourage you to do something now. I wanna encourage you to write down the different situations you felt fearful in. Maybe that's in the past or from today forward. You know, what kind of fear was it? If it was unhealthy fear, then stop. Check yourself to see if you are walking in the spirit of power and love. And what were the situation or circumstances that caused you the most fear? And in those situation and circumstances, are the same people involved? Are the same things involved? Or what's worth noting in there? There may be some trends that you can easily walk away from. I mean, learning to diagnose fear is essential in dealing with it. And learning to deal with it will keep you moving down the path that God has created for your life. If you are fearful and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, I wanna give you an opportunity right now to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. All you have to do is pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner and I turn from sin and I repent for my sins and I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, please get involved with a Bible-based church in your area and also reach out to this church because we want to send you a Bible so that you may also continue to experience God's love. Let's continue in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this worship service. Thank you for bringing us together and, and for helping us to confront and recognize fear. Father God, we, we thank you for creating us, knowing that we were going to experience unhealthy fear in our lives and for giving us the power to do so and love and the self-discipline to address it. 
And Father God, we pray for everybody right now that is listening to this broadcast and experiencing the Holy Spirit. Please help us to identify that unhealthy fear and cut it out of our hearts and replace that with the Holy Spirit and with your spirit of power and love. And we pray all these things the way that you taught us to say, saying together as a family of faith, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today on this broadcast and remind you that we will be back together now in two weeks on August 26 at 6 30 p.m. And before I go, I want to challenge you to do one more thing. I want to challenge you to contact each other. It has been a long ride since March when we closed down and, and now that we are starting to get back together and many people feel very much alone. So please reach out to a family, a friend, a loved one, or someone you haven't talked to. Just send them a text and tell them that you're praying for them. It really speaks volumes to someone when you just let them know that you're thinking about them and what they are doing in their life means enough to you that you are praying for them. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not. Bow our hearts, we bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another no oh God let us be a generation that seeks who seeks your face oh God oh Jacob now let's have our benediction and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace and his love and his grace. And you're going out and in you're coming in. And you're lying down and in you're rising up in your labor and in your leisure. In your laughter and in your tears. Until that day in which you come to stand before Jesus. In which there is no sunset and no dawning. Go in fearless, powerful love. You are sent. Amen.